In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of free energy. Now, we've talked about spontaneity and its link to entropy. However, this link is a little bit awkward because in order to figure out if something is spontaneous or not, you have to know the entropy change of the system and the entropy change of the surroundings. If your surroundings just happens to be all of the environment, then it's going to be very difficult to evaluate whether a process is spontaneous or not. We would really prefer a, a equation or a, a thermodynamic variable that depends on only processes of the system rather than the system and the surroundings. And that's where free energy comes in. So the general definition of free energy is the energy that is available to do work. And the equation for the free energy, uh, we use the variable G, a capital G, make that a little bit smaller. So capital G denotes the free energy. And it's going to be equal to the enthalpy minus the temperature times the entropy, right? So this is our equation for the free energy. G is the free energy, right? This is the enthalpy. And this is the entropy. And of course, T is our temperature, right? So it's so the free energy is clearly related to things that we already know, right? Um, obviously, it's a new definition, but it's related to concepts that you already have a good grasp of, right? So enthalpy and entropy. Now, usually we denote the or we discuss the free energy in terms of the change in free energy, just like we've discussed the enthalpy in terms of changes in enthalpy and the same thing for entropy. Uh, we're going to discuss free energy in the same way. So this equation can also be written in the following fashion where you have delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Right. So. Um, so this kind of gives us a little bit of a clearer picture of how we can interpret the free energy, at least in its comparison to enthalpy and entropy. Right. So this first uh, the, the entropy term is easy to understand physically. Right. Or at least where most of these contributions come from. For the enthalpy, we talked about that these contributions largely come from bonds being broken and formed. So largely, this is the energy of bond breaking. Right. So bonds are broken, bonds are formed, and largely how the, the uh, system responds to these bonds being broken or formed is by releasing heat or absorbing heat uh, based on whether bonds are broken or formed respectively. So that's how we really interpret the energy of the enthalpy, right? How we can interpret how, what it means in a chemical sense. But then what about this term, right? This T delta S, what does this guy mean, right? We know that the entropy is related to randomness, right? As far as the, the disorder, the molecular disorder of a system, right? And that being multiplied by the temperature, what this really gives you is all of these other ways that a molecule can respond to its environment, right? Regardless, uh, outside of just bonds uh, being able to be broken and formed in molecules, molecules can bend, they can stretch, they can rotate, they can move, translate, right? So really this T delta S term gives us the amount of energy that we'll say it gets stuck in these other forms of motion, bending, stretching, rotating, right? All these other things that you can think of that a molecule can do. Right. So this is the amount of energy. From other movement. Right. So other movement that doesn't involve bonds being broken or formed, bends, stretches and rotations and whatnot. Right. So the energy that's available to do work. Right. So this is really powerful here now. Like what we what we can say is that the energy that's available to do uh, chemical work, free energy is going to be. Uh, just the energy from bond breaking minus the energy contribution from all this other stuff that molecules can do, right? That's going to be the energy that's going to be a be available to do work, right? Okay, so now from just being given this equation, it's probably not clear the exact link to the uh, to spontaneity and the second law of thermodynamics, but there is a link that we're going to illuminate here. Keep in mind, like I said, I'm not going to write. Um, system all the time, but all of these quantities are referring to the system. This is the delta S of the system. 
This is the enthalpy of the system. So you get the Gibbs free or the free energy change of the system, right? So how do we relate this to uh, delta s of the universe, right? To relate it, to relate it to the um, to relate it to spontaneity. Well, what we can do first is divide by t on both sides. Try to isolate this delta s of the system, right? So let's divide by t on both sides. Right, if we do that, then we get delta G over T is equal to delta H over T, right, minus delta S. And I'll go ahead and keep delta S system for the, uh, for the entropy. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and keep that subscript here for everything, right, all of this for the system, right? Okay, so if we uh, if we multiply if we, multi if we divide by t on both sides, right, we end up with this expression, right? Um, in order to make this positive, I'm just going to change sign here, so we can make that positive, that negative, that negative, right? So what we can do here, we know that here we actually have the definition for the delta s of our surroundings, right? So so delta s surroundings, remember. Delta S surroundings is just going to be equal to negative delta H over T, right? The delta H referring to the quantity of heat released from our system, right? So this is actually the definition of delta S of the surroundings. So that gives us delta S surroundings plus delta S of the system. It's going to be equal to negative delta G of the system over T, right? So, um, on the right hand side here, right, this stuff, this is delta S of the universe, right? It's the sum of the, the entropy of the surroundings and the system. So when we sum those, we get delta S of the universe. So we can actually rewrite this as negative delta G over T is equal to delta S of the universe. Right. So now that we're talking about delta S of the universe, now we can make a direct comparison to the second law of thermodynamics, a direct link between spontaneity. Right. We know that the second law of thermodynamics tells us that the ent entropy of the universe should always be increasing. Right. We should always have an increasing delta S of the universe. Well, in order for this to be positive, right, this delta G has got to be negative. So that means that in order for this delta S to be positive, we need delta G to be negative. That means that de a negative delta G is associated with a spontaneous process, right? So negative delta G is associated with a spontaneous process, right? And it's because of this equation, right? Since this equation has that negative sign out front, in order for this to be positive, the delta G has to be negative. Delta G is associated with uh, negative delta G is associated with a spontaneous process. So by contrast, a positive delta G is associated with a non spontaneous process. And a special case for delta G being equal to zero. Delta G being equal to zero is going to be known as an equilibrium process, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a second. Right, but I just want to drive this home and make sure that this is clear, right? Delta S of the universe, second law of thermodynamics. If it's positive, right, that means it's spontaneous, right? That's what we got from the second law of thermodynamics. So in order for this to be positive, in order for this delta S of the universe to be positive, delta G for our system has to be negative, which means that a negative delta G is going to be associated with a spontaneous process. Okay, so this is extremely powerful here. Now we have a thermodynamic quantity that is only associated with properties of our system that can tell us whether the process is going to be spontaneous or not. So we don't have to care about what's going on in the surroundings. We don't have to calculate it. We don't have to have any way to quantify it. We can tell just from properties of the system whether we're consistent with the second law of thermodynamics, whether we have a spontaneous process or not. Okay, so a little bit about equilibrium, just to finish this off, a little bit about equilibrium, right? I just said that if we have delta G is equal to zero, then that's going to be an equilibrium process.
right? Equilibrium uh, for now, we're going to actually dive deep into equilibrium and non-equilibrium processes uh, later on in the course. But for now, just know that equilibrium is where it, for a chemical reaction means that it's no longer um, creating reactants or products. It's just sitting in the middle where you no longer ha have a creation of uh, products or a decomposition of any reactants, right? So this chart shows you free energy as a function of the composition of products and reactants, right? You can see that at the bottom, uh, the delta G would no longer be changing, right? It reaches this minimum where you would no longer have any slope or any change in the delta G. So when delta G is equal to zero, that means that your reaction is at equilibrium. Okay, so hopefully this was a good introduction to free energy, right? This is a useful quantity that we'll be able to get a lot of mileage out of in the chemistry curriculum in order to figure out whether, uh, whether uh, processes are spontaneous or not. In the next video, we'll go through a few examples of how to use this free energy equation in order to solve some problems.